So today we begin a new and exciting message series called Just Let Go. This message is for all of us here. If we're not sure that we need to let go of something, consider the following. Do we find ourselves worrying about money, politics, family issues, say climate change? Do we worry about what others think about us, the way we look, whether or not we have the most up-to-date technology, or say, the best cars? If none of this applies to you and to us, I'm happy. But please listen to this anyway. I think it'll be of great importance. For the next few weeks, we will focus on the Gospel of Mark. This week, we will look at a passage from today's Gospel. In the Gospel, Mark tells us, as Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt down before him. Mark says that Jesus is on a journey. A man runs up to Jesus and kneels before him. Now, he's not some random man. No, he is a rich, young, and has a lot going for him. The man runs up to Jesus and kneels down. Now, what's strange about kneeling down in front of Jesus is that important people usually don't kneel to others. Most often, they have people who run to them to get their attention. So why is he kneeling? What does Jesus want from us? With all that he has, he knows that something is missing. Haven't we all felt like that from time to time, that something is missing from our life? We know that we are blessed in so many ways. We may have influence in our schools or on our teams, at our work. Maybe we're a leader in our industry or profession. Maybe we live in a community such as Paoli that has the access to just the wonderful schools. We know that we are blessed. And from the outside, everything may look great. But on the inside, we sense that something is missing. Similar to the young man, we're just not sure what it is. That rich young man, despite all he has, seeks something more. And he does it by asking the following question. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Often when we hear that phrase, eternal life, we think simply of a time of our next life, the one after this one is over with. But he's asking more about inheritance. How can he inherit a never-ending life? Jesus begins to answer with the following basics. He answers with the Ten Commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness, and so on. Now, every rabbi or religious leader would have answered the question the same way. They would have known these commandments. The standard answer to a better life with God is to avoid sin entirely. Now, that rich young man knew this as well. But the basics weren't enough for him. He wanted more. And don't we all just want more? Teacher, all of these things I have observed from my youth, says the young man. He knows and follows the rules, but senses there must be a bigger relationship to God than just following rules. A life of peace, a life of purpose meaning and value with joy that doesn't depend on our circumstances. That's certainly much more than just following rules. Now, the young rich man has caught a glimpse of the person of Jesus. He wants to know how he can get it. What can he do to have eternal life, to own it? Now, many of us have learned when we were children that Christianity is about following rules. The rules weren't necessarily explained. They didn't add anything specially to our lives. They were just rules, and we followed them but didn't give them much thought at all. But as we grew older, say maybe in high school or college, 
we chose not to follow those rules. And we were not really interested in following the rules now. But here's some news for us all that gives us great hope. Christianity is not about religious rule keeping. It is about the heart. Christianity is about the heart. And that's what our gospel is as well. If you've given up on church, which I know isn't the case because I see everyone here today, that is wonderful. A living, loving faith doesn't start with rule keeping. It's much more than that, everyone. But if we want faith that goes beyond the simple rule, then we have to do something more than just follow. The rich young man realizes that following the rules isn't enough, and he's asking Jesus for more. Again, we always ask Jesus for more. In Mark, Jesus says, looking at him, loved him, and said to him, you are lacking in one thing. Go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Guess what? After that, come follow me. His money is crippling him because it's controlling him. That's what the issue is. It's keeping him from the life that God has in mind for him. And if he's ever going to follow our Lord and our Savior, he's going to have to let go, which is what we're talking about, letting go of his control of money. Now, notice this is a little more nuanced than it seems. Jesus is not asking us to get rid of our wealth and live in poverty. No, he's not asking us to give away all our money. He says, go and sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Jesus told the man to give up his money and possessions, not because it's wrong to have money. It's not wrong to have money at all. He told him to give up his earthly money because it's temporary in exchange for something that's eternal. That's what we're here for, everyone, something that is eternal. He's inviting the rich young man into the life of a whole new level, a life that leads to even a greater wealth by letting go of the one thing that he's held on to most tightly. So how does he respond? He responds, and it's in Mark, at this statement, his face fell. And I think the rich young man didn't even hear anything Jesus said. As soon as Jesus said, go sell everything you have, the rich young man couldn't hear anything else. He couldn't hear about treasure in heaven or the part about following Jesus because he couldn't imagine living a life without all his materialistic things. Again, at this statement, his face fell and he went away sad for he had many possessions. Now, how often does our face fall when we hear something that we kind of don't agree with? It happens a lot, doesn't it? Absolutely. Jesus gave him the exact advice he needed, and yet he couldn't follow it. He couldn't let go. It is so hard to let go. So the message for this week is to give up control of our money. No, that's not what it's about. Because this message, the gospel is not about giving up our money. It's about increasing our heart, increasing our heart for all that is eternal. The desire of our heart for a more abundant life, which comes when we follow our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and like, unless the rich young man, we're holding on to something instead. And that happens. We're human. We hold on to things. If there's something that we need to let go, and receive the gifts of the blessing of what God has given us, just let it go. If there's something we need that, that we struggle with, to, even if God can't help us let it go, it, he will, for all God has said to us is yes. The point of these talks is to identify those things that get in the way of loving our Lord and Savior. Again, it's not about money. Maybe it's about people's opinions of us. Maybe it's in control of our families or people or co-workers. We just need to let it go. God knows what we need. We will examine what it takes to be a great servant of God and just let things go. 
So I ask this week to take a few minutes and read the Gospel of Mark again, that passage. Read it as a part of our quiet time. Put ourselves in that scene. Imagine God is speaking to us through the Gospel. When he's asking us to let go of all that makes us sad, that makes us turn away, but it shouldn't. He's asking us to let it go because he wants nothing from us but his love and, his, and, our, and, our, and our lives. Let go. It's easy to do if we have our Lord.